What's going on guys, Arava here and welcome back to my F1 2017 career mode part number two today. We're here at the Chinese Grand Prix today, but before we get into it, we're going to look at the R&D tree. Of course, from last time out, we didn't actually uh, look at the tree uh, between qualifying and the race or after the race to actually spend our resource points that we collected from the previous practice session. So for the first time now, following what was a pretty decent opening round, I feel, very, very entertaining race. And in terms of the result we got, I think fairly, fairly decent considering where our team it was and obviously just where the Toro Rosso looked to be in the pecking order especially after qualifying where we was 15th place so to get that high up I think was pretty damn good and to kick off our career mode with points was good but generally I think the Toro Rosso in my opinion I think what it needs is going to be chassis development and aero development straight away I don't think we're going to need power uh, necessarily right now. Maybe durability, but at the moment, obviously, you can see looking at the engine, it's not too bad. The gearbox is not worn uh, worn that much. Obviously, it's only been one race. So for now, we don't need to worry about durability. So we're going to leave that top half of the tree and pretty much the left-hand side of the tree, which is the uh, powertrain, basically, and take a look at the right-hand side and the bottom side for the chassis and aero. We're going to actually start things off with chassis weight reduction. So that's the very first pinpoint thing we have to do. We can, you, can, you have to basically select that first one to continue on. On. You can see we've got different elements that we could go to. If you go to the bottom of that side of the tree, you go to tire wear. If you go to the left, you're going to go more towards the actual just general weight reduction and whatnot. So that's going to be the way, the way we're going. Tire wear obviously is a, bit, a big factor and potentially some of the later rounds. So I think it's a good first step and that's obviously going to take one entire uh, week to do. So if you look on the right hand side, when it says week, it pretty much means a race basically. And so then finally we do just general wear. I know I just said we're going to ignore that, but because I didn't have too many points left to actually spend I thought we'll just go ahead and get general wear I'm not too sure at this stage what the the wear rate's going to be like on the Toro Rosso so just to spend the money basically or resource points I'm going to keep saying money but it's resource points but we basically just bought uh, the general wear for the sake of the fact that we've got some money left over I didn't feel like just kind of wasting it and just having it sit there so but anyway let's get into practice and head to Shanghai this weekend, Caesars arrive in Shanghai for the Chinese Grand Prix. First up is today's practice session. Welcome then to all our viewers and of course to Anthony Davidson as well. Now, Ant, I wanted to ask you, obviously there's a lot of hard work involved in these sessions, a lot of simulations as well. Is this something the drivers enjoy or is it just a routine that becomes a chore? There's nothing routine about driving a Formula 1 car, I can tell you that. 300 kilometers per hour down the straights, 4G through the corners. It's hard to ignore those forces acting on your body. It's lap after lap of hard, exhausting work. You always enjoy driving these cars. It's a real privilege. Although I must say, if you're having a day where you can't get the car to do what you want and it's generally underperforming, then it's a lot harder to stay motivated. But never a chore, no. Even if you're having a tough start to the weekend, at this point, you know that if you work hard at it, there's still an opportunity to turn things around. So wasting no time at all, we're getting straight into the practice programs here at China. You can see uh, track acclimatization actually not that great for me. I've missed a few of the gates there. You can see a few red dots, but we get enough to at least get the green target on that. And then we move swiftly on to the tire wear test, which from last year's game, uh, it seemed a little bit, uh, a bit of an easier time this year. Last year, I know it was definitely a struggle to do the tire wear test because uh, your tires would basically blow up into turn one. Uh, but it was okay this time around. Fuel saving was very, very good, actually. Obviously, through the final bend onto the back straight, if you lift off and just coast the car through, you can really get the bar very, very fast onto the purple. So I recommend doing that if you're struggling maybe to get the, the fuel saving done. And then we did the race strategy, of course, uh, it, under the sun, on the sunlight. And then we did the setup work a little bit. Little did I know, actually. Uh, it's all, It was all dry in practice, but it's actually going to be uh, raining for qualifying. So I didn't know that this time. I didn't actually check the weather indicator so this entire time I was just looking at trying to set the car up as if it was going to be a dry race in high in, in reality actually I don't think it's going to be too bad for us because you saw the setup there running you know pretty I mean it was just a little bit different from the default setup but it wasn't as if I was running very very low aero because of the back straight and qualifying in terms of that we hit the target so looking very dandy on that so let's get straight into qualifying then practice is pretty much done We'd like to welcome you from wherever in the world you join us today for this F1 qualifying session here in Shanghai, China. With the weather as it is today, Anthony Davidson, we have, to some extent, to throw the form book out of the window. Who do you see having the advantage on this slippery, unpredictable track surface? Traditionally, these are very Adrian Newey conditions. 
The Red Bull's habit of creating incredible downforce coupled with the high rake they like to run is perfect for the wet, and it's helped them close the power gap a number of times over recent years. I think Force India as well, always a bit of a dark horse in changeable conditions, and of course the McLarens have a fairly good chassis. Having said that, I don't want to make a firm prediction. More than performance, the deciding factor is going to be the timing. The level of wetness out on the track is going to constantly rise and fall, and anyone who can find that perfect window when it's at its driest will have a big advantage out there. Right, it's showtime, qualifying in the wet. Our first outing ever in the Toro Rosso in any sort of wet conditions, obviously. We didn't have any rain at Australia, thankfully, but we'll see how it goes here in China. My team actually fueled me up for quite a few laps. I think they put in about nine laps of fuel. So this entire session, basically, I just kept on the same set of intermediate tires. The tire weather wasn't too bad. And as we went through the session, basically, I was getting better and better at the conditions. We set an initial lap time, which was very, very poor. You saw into the S section, I was understanding quite a bit. And basically, as I just said, we just continued on. I got more and more comfy with the car, with the conditions kind of sussed out. Okay, I need to brake a little bit early here, maybe get the tar uh, car turned in at this place or, you know, just generally sussing out uh, the best kind of lines, obviously, because sometimes, you know, going wider may help. Sometimes kind of braking earlier, nipping in earlier to get the t uh, nose turned in, get the, uh, on the power earlier is going to get you a better lap time. You can see on the top right, gaining hand over fist in terms of our lap time compared to our previous lap. Still going opposite lock a little bit, so still not fully comfortable, but obviously it is the Toro Rosso and we go across the line right now at the moment it's P4, some people yet to uh, set their lap times yet though, and so we're going to go for another run through turn 1 this one I don't think actually ends up being uh, another kind of good improvement run so we actually just kind of skipped over that one so we did an extra lap of not actually setting a good lap time, then we came round again and basically just did a, that was basically a warm up lap, and we come through for a 5th lap now, come across the line and it's going to be what is it going to be? It's going to be P7 P7, very, very decent. Very, very decent, actually. P7 here at China, second qualifying only. I'm happy with that. I'm very, very happy with that. Carlos Sainz comes uh, in 13th place, so we beat our teammate very comfortably in the top 10, our second qualifying only. I'm very, very chuffed with that. And I think that was a 1-2 for Ferrari. I think that was. I, I can't remember there just a couple of seconds ago. But anyway, as we come through just between qualifying and, uh, and uh, the race, unlike Australia, I actually remember to look in the R&D tree. We have enough points now. So I debated which one to do, front or rear arrow. Now, looking at that qualifying session and practice in China and Australia, I'm going to go for the rear downforce. I think we're going to need that. It's not going to affect the drag, so that's good as well. So that's what we've gone for. Let's get now into the race. It's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today although with the sky falling as it is perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth and Anthony Davidson could be a wet one today great to have you with us what are your thoughts it is a touch damp isn't it well as a driver there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions standing water tire temperature and visibility judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you drive them through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tires kick up with that then, let's run through the grid order. Kimi Raikkonen starts today from pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Vettel, Max Verstappen, and Massa, a Toro Rosso, Perez, Grosjean, and Nico Hülkenberg, Ocon, Stroll, Carlos Sainz, and Magnussen, Palmer, Alonso, Marcus Ericsson, and Stoffel van Dorn, Verlein, and Daniel Ricciardo rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. So as you may have guessed from Crofty's commentary there, there is some rain forecast here. You can see there's actually rain coming down at the start of this race, but my team and it looks like the game is uh, saying that, no, we're all going to start on dry tyres. I'm unable to actually change my starting tyre to inters, even though it is actually literally raining right now. You can actually see a few spurts if we go back to the uh, kind of in-cockpit cam screen. So it's looking like we're going to start on a set of super soft tyres. I've changed it to super softs because it initially said soft tyres, but we're going to start on the fastest tyre available, we go to five red lights to the Chinese Grand Prix, round number two of this season, we're underway, very gingerly there, bit of wheel spin in second and third gear, but generally a good getaway, bit of a bang of tyre there with the Force India car of Sergio Perez, and there's a bit of contact up ahead, and that's a Williams half round, and yes, he's completely around Massa, off on the grass there, we make a move down the inside of Sergio Perez, yellow flags momentarily, but now it's all good and all green, we actually nip it around the outside of Max Verstappen, who's been caught out napping a little bit through turns two and three, trying to feed down the 
power. You can see going opposite lock narrowly, narrowly just missing some contact there with his side pod with my left front tire. But now we'll try and nip it down the inside of this very infamous corner where we saw, saw so many dive bomb moves in real life in the 2017 season. And on the exit, really, really opposite lock. But look at that. Verstappen actually doesn't have the traction in the Red Bull car. And we've actually done him there on the exit of the corner. So we're up into fifth place now. And we're actually doing pretty damn well as we move on to lap two. Yellow flags. And that's actually going to be for Max Verstappen. Sergio Perez overtakes him into the hairpin. We're going to go very, very deep. A lot of understeer here because it still is raining. You can see clearly on the screen the little spits of rain coming down the screen. But you can see as we look back, Max Verstappen out of this race. So I'm pretty sure that must mean he had a mechanical failure from the get-go from five red lights. Unfortunately, obviously, his teammate Ricardo already had calamities in qualifying starting at the back of the grid. So not a great day in the office for our kind of big brother team or big sister team, Red Bull Racing. And now as we move on to lap three, Sergio Perez is going to try and make a move on me down the back straight. Obviously, Mercedes engine in the back of the Force Indy car versus my Renault engine in the Toro Rosso. So although I said I don't need to upgrade the powertrain just yet, clearly the Force Indy is very, very uh, uh, handy in a straight line. But we just about defend from Perez. Now, this stage on lap three, it's actually said on the, on the weather indicator that it's going to get drier now for a little while. So although it was raining initially on lap one, and it is still a little bit damp, it's now getting drier and drier as we go through. And then according to the indicator, it was then going to start raining once again. So a bit of a very weird changeable race at the moment we're seeing. And behind us, you can see Hulkenberg tries to go around the outside of, I think that's Roman Grosjean in the first Haas car there, but both the Haas cars kind of lie astern. And on the exit of the corner, will Hulkenberg get that just about? It looks like, I think he will get it. I think it may have been actually Grosjean trying to overtake Hulkenberg. So this may be effectively a defensive move from Hulk. But at the moment, he's staying ahead of Grosjean. Grosjean. And for now, we're still staying ahead of Sergio Perez. We've got more yellow flags behind us. So is that another car going to go out of the Grand Prix? 17 runners only. So there's someone else also gone out with Max Verstappen. It's going to be Esteban Ocon. So Perez is uh, forcing India teammate there out of this Grand Prix. Retired seemingly again from a mechanical failure. So we've seen plenty so far. Obviously, it's the beginning of the season. So teams are going to be a little bit unreliable. It's not just me that could be susceptible to reliability. It's great to see the AIR. And that definitely is something that the AI are capable of. You know, that's what's meant to happen at the beginning of the season everyone's meant to be a little bit you know timid and uh, unreliable as I'm talking about that though you saw Perez overtook me with ease as I, I was caught basically napping going into turn two on the left hander just kind of went too deep and Perez just straight uh, straight away just switched back to me and got the traction down so unfortunately we're down now to P6 I say unfortunately P6 is a very lofty height really in reality for a Toro Rosso car I think we're doing pretty damn well so far but now Grosjean is going to try and spoil the party he's going to go down my inside we've got DRS open from Perez, but Grosjean, I think, had DRS off me, obviously. So we go deep. Well, I tried the switchback move, and it just didn't work. Grosjean actually just completely had me. I don't know why I tried it. I thought I could maybe get good traction. Didn't really. At this stage now, it is definitely dry. It's dry enough for these slicks, but I was actually just too timid, I think. I, I was just too timid, and I was looking at the track surface, and you can see it still looks pretty damp. So I think it was just kind of a mind thing and a mental thing for me that I wasn't able to have the confidence to get the power down as early as I could do in these conditions. And eventually, I start to get my composure back on lap seven, on towards lap eight. I start to come back at Grosjean and Perez, but at the same time, Hulkenberg's still closing me down. You can see we're setting green sector time as we come up to the end of the second sector split. So we are finding that groove once again and we are closing up visually you can see Grosjean a lot closer but Grosjean also very very close to Sergio Perez within DRS probably we get a little bit opposite lock through that swooping right hander so not fully flat yet in these uh, kind of half damp conditions but Grosjean up ahead you can just about see in the distance is going to go for the move he moves the right hand side of the circuit to go down the inside we're in rich mix momentarily move it back down to standard because at the moment we are on low fuel Grosjean up ahead just about squeezes out Sergio Perez there so a good move for the Frenchman in the Haas car but then it looks like he's actually going to dive straight into the pits we're going to continue on with Perez so looks like Grosjean feels like well he's on the super soft tyres Hulkenberg's on soft so me and Perez are going to go on you can see the tyre wear there briefly it's quite poor but I feel like if you know on the indicator it said it was going to maybe continue to rain again and it definitely is now as we go into lap 10 so I just saw no point of uh, coming in so I think Grosjean's kind of messed himself over there because he's, he's effectively kind of ruined himself by an extra pit stop coming in for another set of drives because now I say box in this lap to my uh, mechanic because by the time we get to the end of lap 10 it really is way too damn double lock up there go wide and actually as we look back behind us Hulkenberg sends it down the inside bit of contact made there because I lose the rear end and unfortunately 
unfortunately Hulkenberg is kind of just there as a bit of a wall to stop me spinning. And then we go side by side with Nico. We go down the inside and we just about get it and keep it ahead of him into the pit lane. But you can see so, uh, so, so close with the Williams car there as well. Nose to tail between myself, the Renault and the Williams car. And we just about make the pit lane. So I'm kind of very, very lucky. That was literally so on the edge. So, so on the edge that I actually made that pit limiter there. But we're going to come in now for a set of intermediate tyres. Finally, now you can see it very with the sheen on the pit on the pit lane. It definitely is now time for the green wall intermediate tyres. And now, well, I'm not too sure. It's still early on this Grand Prix, so I would say maybe to learn the race. But I, I just don't know the tyre wear on these intermediates. Obviously. Uh, we did uh, some laps in, uh, in qualifying. We did five laps and we're still able to improve our lap times after doing five laps on the same set of inters in qualifying. So I, I think they're going to be pretty durable. I just don't know. We're going to have to kind of just judge it as, as we go, really. Maybe kind of copy the AI and see what they do. But at the moment, we come out uh, ahead of Lance Stroll. Looks like he jumped Nico Hulkenberg, actually. So pretty good for us, maybe, or maybe not. I don't know how good Stroll's going to be in the wet. But now it's a case of to get our head down and just try and chase down Sergio Perez there. You can see he's a few seconds up the road. But just briefly as well, onto the end of this same lap, lap 11, you can see on the top left, we're at the moment P8 out of P17. You can see on the mini map, we've got two cars there, including my teammate, who's still on softs. I just don't... That's just frustrating to see. So Sainz has kind of ruined his own race there. But we move up into P6. So we're still in a very, very good place in this Toro Rosso car. And by lap 17 now, so we've cut six laps later. So literally all those six laps, you've missed nothing. We have just been pushing hard, trying to find the rhythm in the wet. And by lap 17, we're finally catching up to Perez and making headway into the first few turns. Right up his gearbox now and trying to set up this move. But you can see now visually so much more rain is coming down the screen. You can see all the drips coming down. And they've definitely improved the way it looks now on this year's game in terms of it just looks so much more of a tricky situation. Like, I, I actually, I'm not going to lie, into some of these corners, it was a case of almost trying to wish that some of the droplets could kind of move out of the out of the way of looking at the brake marker boards because sometimes they were in, in the way. I just couldn't see it. But now we get a great bit of traction now. And we're going to try and go down the inside of Perez. It's going to it's going to eventually turn to the outside for the next part of the S section. We didn't quite make it side by side with him then. But for the second part, we do find the grip around the outside. It will turn to the inside now for the double left-hander. Perry is still going to be there around my outside. He gets a better entry into that left-hander, but in the second left-hander, we're going to try and squeeze him out. Still side-by-side with Perry. so a brilliant little battle in the wet here on the inters, and we are surely going to get this now as he goes round the outside. No, we break early now, and you know what? I'm going to kind of go a little bit wide. You're going to cut back in, do a bit of a switch back, try and get a better line into this corner opposite lock, but we feed the car through, and you can see there Perez has a real, real big issue on the uh, middle way stage of that swooping right hander and onto the back straight we're overtaking him and we're up into now what is a very lofty p5 for a Toro Rosso car I think you know Toro Rosso you don't expect it you know in normal conditions to be up in p5 even especially in the wet really so I think we're doing a fantastic job so far although to say that now I completely jinxed it in the commentary because now we go so sideways into that swooping right hander on lap 18 and Perez gets back behind us so you know still able to make mistakes and this year definitely for sure for now I can say if you do make a mistake on this year's game the AI will punish you they're that aggressive they will they will punish you if you make a mistake not just in the wet even in the, in the dry I found in Australia you just have to concentrate so so hard and just you know like very like it kind of is in the real life season you're just flat out every single lap there's no time to rest and if you do just lose concentration the AI will close you up and they will try and overtake you. So you saw there, Perez did pit in a little bit earlier than us, uh, two laps earlier. We continued on for two more laps till lap 20 until I decided, now nah, let's just come in for safety's sake. I could have maybe continued on for those eight laps and gone to the end, but I thought just to cover Perez off, just to be safe, don't want to get a punch or anything, let's just make a pit stop and let's just, you know, that'll be it, end of story. We can't say we made a mistake on the strategy in that sense, so... We come in for another set of intermediate tyres and uh, a cl clutch out, obviously, as we now do on this year's game. I still don't know how much of an advantage that can gain you if you get it wrong or right. Uh, I'm not too sure at this stage. But pit limits are off down the down the pit lane, out on the pit exit. And you can see we're actually uh, well ahead of Perez, actually. We're actually uh, more ahead of him than we were when he came into the pits, actually. So the overcut technically has worked there on the inters that actually worked very well for us so now we move on to lap 27 now six laps later it's been pretty much a case of just doing our own race obviously we can't catch the top four of the two ferraris and two mercedes cars they've just got way too much pace they're pretty much three seconds faster than us they're pretty much an entire half a lap ahead of us but as we move on to the last lap in all this kind of oh doing my own race just making sure i'm staying ahead of perez i make a fatal blow um and i think you can see what it's going to be on the right hand side of your screen I 
run out of fuel. I did not check the fuel indicator. I was on standard the entire time, and I thought, oh yeah, surely we'll be fine, because we were fine before the pit stops, and now... Oh... Oh, God. Absolute calamities. Absolute calamities. I've already bottled it, and it's only been the second race in my career mode here. It's day one of me uploading this career mode, and I'm already bringing out the absolute calamity disaster here. Across the line, we still come home for points. One point to be exact. We still beat our teammate. So in all of this, the game's actually still going to re reward me for beating my objective and beating my teammate. But, wow. I mean, I wasn't the only one with calamities. Because actually, looking at the replay camera, Fernando Alonso retired on the last half of the Grand Prix. Very realistic stuff. The Honda engine gives up on the last half of the Grand Prix there. But, wow. Calamities from me. From what could have been a brilliant, brilliant P5 to P10. So, another excellent win from Ferrari. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here? Well, keeping their tyre temperatures up in the tricky, wet conditions was really important. There's not much grip out there at the best of times, and it's ten times worse if you're out there on cold tyres. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a huge advantage today. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. So all round, I guess you could say a pretty bad day in the office for the entire Red Bull family here. Ricardo makes a great P20 to P9 recovery, but Verstappen out this race, Carlos Sainz not in the points, and I only get P10 from what could have been P5. Yeah, not brilliant, not brilliant there from us, but we, as I said, we still actually beat our objective, we still beat Carlos, so we actually still did well. You can see on the reputation level, uh, actually still positive, so it, it could have been worse, it could have been worse, at least we did that. I mean, that's just, that's just a little tiny bit of redemption, but guys, if you have enjoyed it anyway, smash the like button, let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for more F1 2017 career mode this week. There'll be plenty of videos being uploaded over this entire week, so do get subscribed for that, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.